Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Millennium TV News. This is Fahmid Islam with you. Before moving on, let's look at today's top stories. Obama pledges more than $450 million aid to help Colombia peace plan. And we unpaid workers keep China's big holiday. Masses head to China ahead of Lunar New Year. Fighting to the finish in Ramadi. Iraq blames ISIL for deadly attacks on troops. Those were the headlines, now the details. President Barack Obama said on Thursday he would ask the U.S. Congress for more than $450 million in aid to help Colombia end half a century of wrenching conflict and implement a peace accord aimed at ending Latin America's longest war. If approved, the aid would help with security and fighting the drug trade, as well as educating and retraining members of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, the leftist rebel group at war with the government since 1964. After half a century of wrenching conflict, the time has come for peace, Obama said after meeting with Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos. The U.S. government would also commit $33 million to help a global program to help the country remove landmines in the next five years, and Obama said he would help mobilize more international aid if the peace deal is reached. Three previous attempts at an accord failed, but the government and FARC are on the verge of an agreement after four years of talks. Santos thanked the U.S. government for its long-standing bipartisan support for Plan Colombia. As millions stream home to celebrate the Chinese New Year, some migrant workers are refusing to leave their work sites, demanding unpaid wedges. <laughs> A show of defiance in China, while hundreds of millions of migrant workers return home to their families for the Lunar New Year holiday, some are staying put to make a point. Pay us the wages we earned with our blood and sweat, their banners read. They haven't been paid for almost a year for their work on this apartment complex. And they're not alone. Visited southern China to see why workers across the country aren't getting paid. What we're seeing here is a lot of factories in this region that are struggling from rising costs and increasing labor costs and uh, dwindling orders from a slowdown in the Chinese and the global economy. There is a risk now, there is a fear that after the Chinese New Year holiday, there may not be enough jobs for many of the workers that are going home for their annual holiday. But for these unpaid migrant workers, going home isn't an option. They're too angry and proud to face their families. The local government doesn't help us. They just use all kinds of excuses to stall. They tell us the developers don't have any money, or they'll look into it today, they'll look into it tomorrow. In the meantime, we've got parents and children to look after. Labor activists say there's been a spike in wage protests as the nation's economy slows. It's a big concern for Beijing, worried the anger could spill over and threaten the rule of the Communist Party. The government's tried to crack the whip with local officials, telling them to investigate wage disputes. But authorities have also tried another approach, arresting labor activists who've been educating China's migrant army on how to get what they're owed. The world's largest mass human migration is underway in China as people rush back home to celebrate the Lunar New Year with their families. The world's largest mass human migration continued on Thursday as Beijing residents rushed to catch a train back home to celebrate the Lunar New Year with their families. The 40-day travel frenzy surrounding the week-long Lunar New Year holiday, which is often described as the world's biggest annual migration of people, began on January 24 this year and will last until March 3. During this period, the estimated total volume of passengers is expected to reach more than 2.91 billion, up by 3.6 percent year-on-year said the National Development and Reform Commission, China's top economic planner. China's state broadcaster CCTV reported that it would witness the peak of the migration on Thursday as more than 8.35 million train journeys expected to be made across the country on the day. People at Beijing train station were happy to have been able to buy tickets. I could not get a ticket in the first place. I kept refreshing the online ticket website and finally got one. I'm so happy and exci excited. Iraqi forces say they are winning the fight against Islamic State in some of the last remaining pockets of resistance in a Ramadi district. 
Iraqi forces on the move in Ramadi in an effort to clear out the final forces of Islamic State. Dozens of IS fighters have been killed, 225 bombs have been removed. The militants have been pushed into Ramadi's eastern suburbs. Ramadi, battered by U.S.-led airstrikes, remains off-limits to its nearly half a million displaced residents, most of whom fled before the army advance. At least 28 killed as one car bomb hits army barracks in Ramadi and another targets government base in Fallujah. At least 28 Iraqi soldiers have been killed in suicide attacks blamed on the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant group in Anbar. Iraqi government officials said one car bomb hit an army barracks on Thursday in the provincial capital Ramadi, where fighting has continued for months despite the Iraqi government's claim that it controls 95% of the city. The second attack targeted a government base in Fallujah, the other major ISIL controlled city under siege by Iraqi forces, the officials said. Iraqi forces have been trying to clear areas of Anbar controlled by ISIL, which has seized territory in Iraq and Syria, but their advance has been slowed down by suicide attacks. We shall take a short break here. Do stay with us. We are back in a moment with the headlines here. Assad forces gain ground in Aleppo. Airstrikes worsen serious humanitarian situation. Murdered Palestinian boys' parents slam jail sentences. WikiLeaks Assange to leave embassy if loses UN case. Petrol bombs, tear gas as Greeks protest pension reforms. Welcome back to Millennium TV News. Syrian soldiers enter the towns of Nubul and Al Zahra near Aleppo. Syrian government forces enter two besieged towns northwest of Aleppo. An air of welcome and celebration as the Syrian military advances in two Shiiti towns loyal to Damascus. The army, as well as allied militia backed by Russian airstrikes, broke through rebel lines Wednesday. The insurgents' most important supply route from the Turkish border has been cut off. Aleppo, just south of the Turkish border, was once Syria's most populous city. It has been partitioned into zones of government and insurgent control since 2012. Scores believed killed in Russian attacks and residents starved to death in besieged areas while peace talks break down. Russia has intensified its airstrikes in an attempt to back up the Syrian government's offensive in Syria's Aleppo, killing scores of people. The reports of deaths come amid another breakdown of peace talks in Geneva and a donor conference in London, where world leaders have pledged $10 billion to help Syrians. At least 37 people have been killed, including three children, in suspected Russian airstrikes on several neighborhoods in Aleppo city. A local activist speaking on condition of anonymity told media on Thursday. Two Israelis convicted of abducting and burning Muhammad Abu Khadir, alive, given life, and 21 years respectively. The parents of a Palestinian teenager burned alive by Israelis in the lead up to the 2014 war on Gaza have denounced an Israeli court for not giving two offenders life. The court on Thursday announced that one Israeli has been sentenced to life in prison, while another was given 21 years in prison for the abduction and subsequent murder of 16 years old Mohammed Abu Khadr in East Jerusalem. It is estimated that the pair will spend less than 20 years in prison after parole and possible sentence reductions are taken into account. Suha Abu Khidr said the court should have given both Israelis life sentences for their roles in the death of her son. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who has been holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London since 2012 to avoid a rape investigation, was detained arbitrarily in contravention of international law. A UN panel will rule on Friday. Assange, who enraged the United States by publishing hundreds of thousands of secret U.S. diplomatic cables, appealed to the panel saying he was a political refugee whose rights had been infringed by being unable to take up asylum in Ecuador. The former computer hacker denies allegations of a 2010 rape in Sweden, saying the charge is a ploy that would eventually take him to the United States, where a criminal investigation into the activities of WikiLeaks is still open. Britain said it had never arbitrarily detained Assange and that the Australian had voluntarily avoided arrest by jumping bail to flee to the embassy. But the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention ruled in Assange's favour. Black-clad youths throw stones and petrol bombs at police who fire tear gas and stun grenades in response during a mass rally in Athens against government pension reforms. <laughs> Police 
fired tear gas during a mass rally in Athens on Thursday as Greeks rallied against government pension reforms needed to meet demands of international creditors. Demanding an end to austerity, about 50,000 Greeks marched on parliament in central Athens. Breaking away from the main block of demonstrators, black-clad youth threw stones and petrol bombs at police, who responded with rounds of tear gas and stun grenades. The angry backlash is piling pressure on Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras, first elected just over a year ago. More than 150 people on board a Diamond Princess cruise ship in Sydney are suffering from norovirus gastroenteritis. More than 150 people are suffering from norovirus gastroenteritis on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Sydney. Passengers were treated by the ship's doctor. No one needed to be hospitalized. I just got sick Monday night, vomiting and gastric Monday night, and I was in bed Tuesday. The ship carrying several thousand passengers had just returned from a 12-day cruise to New Zealand. I just got sick Monday night, um, vomiting and gastric um, Monday night, and I was in bed Tuesday. The owner of a warehouse in LA takes in a fresh shipment of Persian rugs after sanctions with Iran are lifted. This is the first shipment coming to America after five years of sanctions for Persian carpet. Alexei Helmi squeals with joy as he unwraps a Persian rug in his store in Tehran Eglis, in area of the LA known as for its large population of Iranian nationals. The rug's arrival was a long time coming. I always said you cannot sanction an art, you know. The rugs that were made 100 years ago doesn't have anything to do with the politic today. Or people who weave these rugs, handmade rugs, they don't have anything to do with the politic. We'll take a short break here. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Millennium TV News. <music> Dozens of sailboats from the United States and Cuba compete side by side during a leg of the Conch Republic Cup regatta. It's an historic event and it was um, my opportunity to visit a beautiful Cuba and uh, to come here legally. And if, as an American, I, I don't have that opportunity. And, and I, there, me and uh, many of my friends, we, we, we took advantage of, of the opportunity that was given to us and we're so happy to be here. Call it diplomacy on the water, American flags fly in the waters of Havana as part of the Castillo del Moro regatta. It's all part of the Conch Republic Cup, offering American sailors like Mark Seller the rare chance to visit Cuba. We love meeting new people and getting to know what the people of a new country are like that we've never been able to see. We, you know, we've been kind of shut out from one another for many, many decades. So that's the main reason, the intrigue of knowing what people are like you know, from a civilization or culture of people that we've never been able to know. Women employed in judicial institutions can no longer wear the hijab to work in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hijabs are no longer welcome in judicial institutions in Bosnia and Herzegovina to avoid suspicion of religiously motivated bias, according to a recent conclusion reached by the country's High Judicial and Prosecutorial Council. Lawyers, prosecutors and others employed in judicial institutions can no longer wear the hijab to work. Why the third parties, such as witnesses, will be permitted to participate in hearings while wearing it will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Thursday urged teachers to pay special attention to their students so that they become good human beings and refrain from drug addiction and terrorist attacks. Islam shanti dharma. Islam dharma kakhano bali ni suicide karo. Je suicide karo bhe jabe. jabi. Ato cho shay Islam dharma na me jodhi kono dharma shantrashi ba jongi baadhi kaar jokram eta karo kache grohan jokgo na. কাজে আমাদের ছেলে মেয়ে আজন এই সব থেকে দূরে থাকে তাদের জন্য কে বিভ্রান্ত করতে না পারে কাজে প্রত্যেকটা স্কুল কলেজ মসজিদ মাদ্রাসা সব জায়গায় এই শিক্ষাটা দেওয়া উচিত যে এই ধরনের বিভ্রান্তিমূলক কাজে যেন কে লিপ্ত না হয় দ্য প্রাইম মিনিস্টার সেড দিস ওয়াইল ইনাগুরেটিং দ্য ন্যাশনাল প্রাইমারি এডুকেশন উইক 2016 এট দ্য ওসমানি মেমোরিয়াল অডিটোরিয়াম ইন দ্য সিটি শেখ হাসিনা রিনিউড হার হোপ দ্যাট বাংলাদেশ উইল বি ফ্রিড ফ্রম এন ইলিটারেসি সুন এন্ড অ্যাটেইন 100% লিটারেসি রেট the country's literacy rate is now 71% due to the various steps of our government. Inshallah, Bangladesh will soon be freed from illiteracy, she said. The Minister of Primary and Mass Education organized the program with Minister Mustafizur Rahman in the chair. Bachara jate thake, tar jono amari school e tiffiner babostha ba midday miller babostha ho kara hotche. Othe ke lakai kichu to biddhano rogi bhekti thaken tara shajjo karen, obibabokra kurta paren. নিজেরা উদ্যোগ নিয়ে প্রত্যেক স্কুলে যদি এইভাবে মানে বাচ্চাদের টিফিন তৈরি করে খাওয়ার ব্যবস্থা করা যায় তাহলে আর কেউ ঝরে পড়বে না কে কবে আমাদের কি 
অনুদান দেবে সাহায্য করবে সে আশায় না থেকে আমরা সব উদ্যোগে কিন্তু এই পদক্ষেপগুলি নিতে পারি Now the business is news. President Barack Obama will launch a long shot bid next week to impose a 10 a barrel dollar tax on crude oil that would fund the overhaul of the nation's aging transportation infrastructure. The White House said on Thursday. The proposed fee which would be paid by all companies and phased in over 5 years was quickly met with scorn by lawmakers in the Republican controlled Congress. In the last year of his presidency, Obama has said the country must stop subsidizing the dirty fossil fuels of the past and focus on clean renewable fuels that do not exacerbate climate change. By placing a fee on oil, the president's plan creates a clear incentive for private sector innovation to reduce our reliance on oil and at the same time invest in clean energy technologies that will power our future, the White House said in a statement. Eurozone economic growth will slightly accelerate this year and next The European Commission estimated on Thursday but the pace will be slower in 2016 than previously forecasted because of increased global risks. Picture postcard Greece but for investors a vision of an economy at a standstill. Ships without crew stations empty of commuters many here in Athens for a general strike amid fury over government plans to slash salaries and reform pensions as part of its bailout. Now the science technology and environment news. IBM's efforts to bolster its cloud offerings could get a boost from new developer tools it is unveiling on Thursday. The tools are aimed at helping IBM stake out more of a claim to an area key to its growth, the network of computers known as the cloud, where its customers are increasingly stashing more of their data and computing work. In doing so, they often sidestep more expensive IBM technology, meaning IBM needs to bolster its own cloud offerings to compete. The new tools help developers work faster, build more functions into existing software applications and create predictive analytical apps. One major hurdle is thwarting efforts to measure the extent of the Zika epidemic and its suspected links to thousands of birth defects in Brazil, accurate diagnosis of a virus that still confounds blood tests. Genetic tests and clinical symptoms have enabled scientists to partially track Zika and Brazil guesses up to 1.5 million people have been infected in the country. The World Health Organization says as many as 4 million people would become infected across the Americas and that Zika has already been locally transmitted in at least 30 countries. But a true measure of the outbreak and its implications is impossible until doctors can quickly and reliably identify Zika through common test of blood contents that measures antibodies triggered in the immune system by a given infection laboratories in brazil the united states and elsewhere are rushing to develop serology tests that can accurately identify zika antibodies while ignoring those triggered by other related viruses with similar structures an expansion of europe's forests towards dark green conifers has stoked Global warming, according to a study on Thursday, at odds with a widespread view that planting more trees helps human efforts to slow rising temperatures. Forest changes have nudged Europe's summer temperatures up by 0.12 degrees Celsius in 750, largely because many nations have planted conifers such as pines and spruce hills dark colored traps the sun's heat, the scientist said. Lighter colored broad-leafed trees such as oak or birch reflect more sunlight back into space but have lost ground to fast-growing conifers used for everything from building materials to pulp. We'll take a short welcome back to Millennium TV News. Viewers now the entertainment news.
Hollywood actor Ryan Reynolds says Deadpool, Marvel's anti-hero about to hit cinema screens, is redefining the genre. In the last few years, superheroes of all kinds have faced a wide range of villains in countless action-adventure movies. Hollywood actor Ryan Reynolds says Deadpool, Marvel's anti-hero about to hit cinema screens, is redefining the genre. According to the movie's synopsis, the film tells the story of former Special Forces agent turned mercenary Wade Wilson, who undergoes a rogue experiment to treat his cancer. The operation leaves him scarred, but also with powers that allow him to heal quickly, and Wilson, soon Deadpool, seeks revenge on the man who carried out the experiment. They're all very, very serious, and they all, you know, um, are very gritty and dark, and Deadpool's kind of the opposite. He takes nothing seriously, and I think that's fun. I think that's a nice, refreshing change of pace, you know? You still have all the intense action. You have a movie that deals with themes that are a little bit more adult than, than necessarily some of the Marvel movies that have come along. Hey, yeah, I want to shoot, baby. Hey, finger stack, especially in the back, brother. I want to thank your mother for a butt like that. You're a shotgun, <laughs> You get to be sort of filthy and funny and You're vulgar. in a great position where it, this movie is going to open up the R-rated landscape yeah. to superhero films. That's great. You know, that's exactly what you want to do is there's this whole world of, you know, R-rated comedy, R-rated themes. You are haunted. You look like an avocado had sex with an older avocado. Thank you. Playboy publishes its first non-nude magazine featuring centerfold Dree Hemingway, the great-granddaughter of novelist Ernest Hemingway. Playboy has shown a preview of the first non-nude edition of the 62-years-old magazine, a milestone in the men's publication. However, this doesn't mean that the girls photographed are not nude but instead are covered up in a variety of inventive ways. Going along with the historic theme, the great-granddaughter of novelist Ernest Hemingway will be the March Playmate. One of the girls in the issue, the magazine describes as beautiful women with a very real relaxed vibe. The star on the cover is Snapchat and Instagram luminary Sarah McDaniel, who relaxed in a chair to take selfies of herself for the publication. The publisher announced in October that it would stop publishing nude photos of women, saying they have become outdated due to the plethora of free pornography on the Internet. Whether this tactic works will be seen when the issue hits newsstands on February 12. Now the sports news. American football's NFL will introduce a rule to require teams to interview female candidates for executive positions. It follows the Rooney rule, which was established in 2003 and requires NFL teams to interview at least one minority candidate for head coaching or senior football operation jobs. Jen Walter coached the Arizona Cardinals in preseason, while Catherine Smith recently became the first full-time female NFL coach when hired by the Buffalo Bills. As the Denver Broncos size up the prospect of winning a third Super Bowl when they take on the Carolina Panthers on Sunday, they can reflect on the significant influence of John Elway dating back to 1983. Through the Broncos were charter members of the fledging American Football League when they were founded in 1960. It wasn't until the late 1970s that they established themselves as one of the sports elite teams. Led by Asian quarterback Craig Morton, Denver enjoyed a franchise best record of 12-2 in the 1977 regular season before reaching their first Super Bowl, losing 27-10 to Dallas. Since then, they have very rarely not produced winning seasons, but it was the arrival of Elway, who was selected as the first overall pick by the Baltimore Colts in the 1983 NFL draft before being traded, that made the biggest impact. Let's have a look at Millennium TV News recap. Obama pledges more than $450 million aid to help Columbia Peace Plan. And we are paid workers to China's big holiday. Masters head to China and the Dublin New Year. Fighting to the finish in Romani. Iraq blames ISIL for deadly attacks on troops. Those were the headlines, now the details. You are up to date with our top stories over here on Millennium TV and don't forget to log in to www.millenniumtv.net. Thank you for staying with us. Allah Hafiz.